everyone. Doing a bit more work on my boomerang. And for a while, I was puzzled with, okay, so how do I get this flat? You know, because it's got a bit of a twisting in the grain and, you know, because I was holding it up, trying to eyeball what's flat. So it's like, duh, put it on a flat surface. Duh. What I'm doing now is I'm still just trying to thin it out and flatten it. Um, taking out this high section. And it's flattening out this, it's still higher in this section, so I gotta bring that down so it's level, and then when it's then once all of this is level, I can flip it over and get a better idea on how to level out the other half of it. And it really increases my appreciation for the people who did it traditionally. In fact, I really should have asked while I was at the Aboriginal Cultural Centre if they knew <laughs> the Aborigines got their boomerangs flat and not all wonky because I've actually seen I have seen traditionally made old boomerangs they're not perfect but they're not bad I mean, they're still a little bit off well one of the older ones I've seen yeah it's a bit off but it's still really well done it's not perfectly flat, but I still reckon the old fella did a pretty good job eyeballing it. Pretty much flat, well, pretty much straight, except for, you know, still got to keep the bend in it. I've chopped a section off at the end because it was hollow and rotten. Sadly, the rot goes a bit deeper. Hopefully, it doesn't go past this knot too far because if it goes all the way to here, I'm pretty much stuck. But I've taken most of the wiggle out of it probably have been thinned out a little bit more on this side. Basically all I gotta do now, except for maybe thin that bit out, no, straighten that bit out a little, is thin the whole thing down. So I probably only want to take about a third of the width off and then I'll start really trying to shape it. Still just doing a lot of stock removal, so I'd get this down by about another third, you know, taking one sixth off either side. But that's just where I am at, at this point in time.
Uh, here it is at this current point. Still got quite a bit to go. I've thinned it down a bit. It's still got, mm, could maybe get away with half what thickness is left to really get it really streamlined. You know, so if you can throw it further, but it's still in a very rough stage. At this current point in time, it could kill a small animal. It very well could. It's not complete yet, but this would, if you were to connect this, if you threw this at a rabbit, you could kill it. You'd probably also kill ducks, geese, uh, possums, bush turkeys, maybe, yeah, probably wallabies, I would guess. Especially the smaller ones. Uh, rat kangaroos, bandicoot, feral cats, goannas, snakes. Well, you could probably even take out a fox. Yeah, I reckon if you threw this real hard, you could kill a fox with it. It's not refined. It can still be made better by making it a bit more streamlined. Definitely smooth it out so it has less friction going through the air. So you can get better range and more energy conserved in the tool. So you get more energy hitting whatever the animal you're trying to kill is. And could be made a bit thinner. That would reduce a bit of its mass but it would also get it a bit more streamlined and cut down on wind resistance but you'll notice it's not shaped like a wing like on the returning boomerangs it's kind of more of a oval shape that's so to try and keep it even on both sides because if you've got that flat section it actually causes lift and that's what that's one of the main reasons why they veer off course which is not something you would really want if you're hunting with one of these. The majority of it is quite flat and wide to put as much mass behind the point of impact as possible. I'm going to be thinning out the edges of it like a convex to bring them down to like a, quite a wide convex but still bring it down to that, that one point. So wherever it hits, it'll be hitting on the edge, giving maximum amount of force put into that tiny area just to maximize its efficiency and make it better for crushing bone and cartilage and doing severe muscle trauma just really really nasty blunt force trauma but really nasty focused blunt force trauma because after all this is a hunting weapon it's a very crude and primitive hunting weapon but it is a hunting weapon and to be honest if I actually was intending to use this for hunting I would want that fine point on it because you know I would want that extra kill power because I do not really want any animal to suffer I would really want that extra kill power just to minimize suffering that said you hit a rabbit with this thing full force it would be very lucky to live. If you hit it in the head, you'd probably crack its skull. It'd easily break ribs and legs and yeah, not not pretty, but you know what? People use these for thousands of years to hunt small animals for food. It's just what they were originally designed for. Now, the actual handle section. There was rot in this thing. Yeah, there's quite a lot of imperfections in this actual piece of wood. You'll notice there's a cavity in there. Might try and find something to try and fill that up. So it's not ideal. That knot is a bit of concern as well. So it's not ideal. It's still a heavy, solid lump of wood. I mean, it's still a solid piece of wood. So I really do think that if I was going to use this, it would definitely take out several animals before breaking and that's if it ended up breaking but I'm guessing and this is you know just a guess I've never actually made one before but I think that because it's just such a solid hard piece of wood it's got some mass to it that knot and those imperfections shouldn't be too much of an issue fingers crossed and even if it did break if it actually hit something it would still 
be quite an effective blunt force trauma hunting tool. And also, I really did want this end to be the handle because it's the longer one and then it's curving out. It's because I find that's a lot better for speed. It just seems a lot lighter. I mean, you're holding onto the heavier section, so when you're throwing it, there's less leverage on that mass because it's closer to your hand, so you can get a bit more speed into it. However, the piece of wood decided no. It had rot on the inside. But I decided, you know what? I'll just make that end the handle end. Now the reason why this is the handle end because of the hole is because while most of this is meant to be convex, coming down to a finer point all the way around, that's a bit uncomfortable to hold on to for throwing. So the handles are actually round. Or at least that is so far what I have observed in traditional boomerangs. That they would have the handle that you hold on to rounder than the rest of it just you know for more comfort when you go to throw it because I've actually thrown boomerangs the wrong way around and it's quite uncomfortable because you got that sharp bit digging into you so so they give them a rounder section for the handle 